best company. Good afternoon. I'm back. <laughs> Some of you didn't think I'd be here. Well, thank you, Ed, for that generous introduction and Archbishop for that moving invocation. And join me also in extending our appreciation to the San Antonio Chamber, the Hispanic Chamber, the Alamo Asian Chamber, and the Alamo City Black Chamber for or organizing this united State of the City gathering. And finally, please help me welcome my partner in service and in life, someone who I'm thrilled that the city is getting to know, San Antonio's First Lady, Erica Prosper. I love you, darling. You're my strength. The State of the City Address is more than a tradition. It's more than patting ourselves on the back for our achievements. It's a vision, and it's a strategy for tackling the critical issues that we face as we navigate through an often uncertain and new American era. Most importantly, it's a commitment to engage directly in our city's future. Educated and engaged residents are our most valuable resource. So thank you all for your willingness to stay involved and to stay connected. In my campaign, I promised you that together we would build the city you deserve. And over the last nine months since you elected me mayor, we're deliberately delivering on that promise, even through some significant challenges and plenty of tough debate. But one thing is for sure, this city has shown its mettle and shown its compassion. And we have a lot to celebrate. Recently, as nearly 100,000 visitors came to our city, I took my nine-year-old son, Jonah, down to our beautiful and expanded new convention center, the one that you're sitting in today, to enjoy the Final Four Fan Fest. I'm proud of what he saw. Thousands of our neighbors volunteering to make the events a success and welcoming visitors to a city that many had seen dozens of times before. People actively contributing to show their pride in the city. That's San Antonio, a city of compassionate and welcoming people in tragedy and in triumph. Those visitors saw and described it as a brand new city, one that we invested in. They walked along a brand new stretch of the Riverwalk, watched games in a refurbished and modernized Alamo Dome. They ate in brand new restaurants. They saw a downtown that had been transformed. The 2018 Final Four surpassed every expectation that the NCAA had for a host city and that our local residents set for a downtown event. Congratulations to Villanova. They may be the NCAA champion this year, but wouldn't you say it was San Antonio that won the NCAA Final Four? Way to go, Team San Antonio, including our city departments, SA Sports, and the local organizing committee, led by the incomparable Jenny Carnes. And I'm happy to say, by the way, that for the 21st straight month, San Antonio Airport broke its passenger record. We had almost a million people, a million passengers in March. Keep up the great work, General Russ Handy. <clears throat> Since the last Final Four was in San Antonio in, in 2008, our population has swelled by almost 20%. But what makes San Antonio so special is that as we have grown, we have not lost the soul, the character, the compassion that makes this one of the most unique cities in the world. As I tell my friends, San Antonio is still the only city in America where a championship celebration can break out in the middle of the interstate, and it's a family-friendly event. <laughs> That's who we are. And now is our time. This luncheon, along with most public events of 2018, takes on extra gravity as we celebrate this city's tricentennial. So please help me give a round of applause to our Carlos Contreras, the Tricentennial Commission, and my colleague, Councilman Roberto Trevino, who have been undaunted in their optimism and unflagging in their determination to make our Tricentennial a success. <laughs> 300 years ago, the Spanish governor, Martin de Alarcón, founded San Antonio on May 5th, 1718. But even before that day, the place that would be San Antonio was inhabited by the original Texans, the Native Americans of the Yanaguana, 
for thousands of years. When a GNU group arrived 300 years later, it took vision and fortitude to fulfill a destiny that was already hundreds year of years in the making. Acting boldly, our founders launched the Mission San Antonio de Valero, San Antonio, the Spanish military's presidio, and a civilian settlement all in one fast-paced week. How's that for bureaucracy? And while our tricentennial is a time to reflect on that rich history, it's also a time for us to consider our status in the world and stake out our future in it. The time is now for San Antonio. Now is the day and now is the hour for us to show the world what San Antonio has become and why it is the perfect place to invest in the future. This once isolated South Texas mission has emerged as an international city that sits at an economic and cultural crossroads. Our multicultural city is showing the nation what diversity truly is and why the future is right here in San Antonio. Our economy is booming. The crime rate is down. People love this city so much that our population will double in the next 30 years. Our airport is setting passenger records every month and we have the highest bond rating of any major city in the United States. And if you were watching last night, the Spurs are still in the playoffs, and in pop, we still trust. <laughs> the state of our city is strong, and I'm proud to be a San Antonian, aren't you? Like the 2014 Spurs, this city's best secret and the secret to success is teamwork. And I'm honored to serve with dedicated, tireless city council colleagues. So please help me recognize our team and as I, as I ask them to stand. Roberto Trevino. <laughs> Cruz Shaw. <laughs> Rebecca Villagran. <laughs> Ray Saldana. Shirley Gonzalez. Greg Brockhaus. Anna Sandoval. John Courage. And the man in the hat, Clayton Perry. Thank you all for your very dedicated work for this city. And I want to recognize our city manager, Cheryl Scully, on her outstanding leadership and fiscal stewardship. Thank you, Cheryl, for your devotion to San Antonio. And thank you all to the city staff who are here today for all you do to keep this city safe and running effectively every single day. And to my staff and the mayor's office, the best mayoral team that's ever been assembled, Thank you for your tireless, endless work and for reminding me to stay on target. And to my partner in service, our Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. Nelson, thank you over the years for your dedication to San Antonio and to our entire region. It is a privilege to work alongside you to make this community one of the greatest in the nation. And I look forward to your next four years. We are all one San Antonio team, and we stand ready to ring in a new era with bold action that connects our city and its history to a prosperous future. Our city has shown, our history has shown time and again that big ideas, bold ideas, are what move this city forward. From our founding 300 years ago to the de decision to host the World's Fair in 1968, to the creation of world-class institutions like the University of Texas at San Antonio, UT Health Science Center, and Southwest Research Institute, to the courageous redevelopment of two military installations into economic hubs for the entire region. San Antonio Big Ideas are our legacy. It's in our DNA, and the time has come for us to put more big ideas into action. And that starts with creating jobs. We gained more than 33,000 new jobs in 2017 with a growth rate faster than the state and the nation. We blew them out of the water. 
Continued growth, we know, will be a defining fact of life as we move into the second 300 years, and it will be rapid. And you've heard it enough now. The next million. More than a million new residents will live in San Antonio by 2040. But what you haven't heard is a commitment from all sectors, public and private, working together to kick our job creation efforts into overdrive to ensure prosperity for our residents and for our businesses. The time for that action is now. And today, I pledge my commitment to help create more jobs than any mayoral administration in San Antonio's history. You heard that right. We will move aggressively to create 70,000 San Antonio area jobs over the next two years. So you ask how we'll do it. We'll do it by creating the kind of city people want to live in and move to, the fundamentals. We'll do it by enhancing the strong partnership between the city's Economic Development Department, the San Antonio Economic Development Foundation, thank you, Renee and Jenna, the private sector and educational institutions. And we'll do it by ensuring that San Antonio remains people-focused and business-friendly so that our regulatory environment encourages more investment, not less. Since I took office last June, more than 3,300 jobs and $260 million of capital investment have been directly incented through the city's partnership with the Economic Development Foundation. That includes locally grown tech firm IP Secure, which will more than double its workforce while boosting the cybersecurity industry on San Antonio's west side. And, I'm, and today, I'm excited to announce that Standard Aero, now the world's largest aerospace engine maintenance and support company, has secured a major new contract with Rolls-Royce that will assure additional engine work for the next 20 years in the target industry. That's great news. The city and Port San Antonio help make, San Antonio, help make Standard Aero a world leader. But let me tell you, Lou Mormon, if you're here, I hear you. I too am tired of the incomplete narrative that San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the, in the nation. It's not enough to be large. My vision is for San Antonio to become a top 10 economy, too. So today, I'm announcing a plan to take advantage of the momentum we've created. And I'm pleased to announce the formation of the Blue Chip Jobs Council. I've tapped this group of leaders from San Antonio's business community to be our cavalry of economic development. They will work side by side with me to target business opportunities here and abroad, wherever they are, and in tandem with our economic development teams at the EDF and at the city. And together, we'll deploy our resources with one singular mission, bring investments and jobs to San Antonio and bring them now. <laughs> Lou Mormon, Bill Grehe, John Montford, Johnny Hernandez, Mike Gibbs, Craig Boyan, Elaine Mendoza, Barbara Gentry, Joe Robles, Kim Lubell, Graham Weston, Brad Barron, Barron, Lanham Napier. If you're here, please stand up. <laughs> Folks, take a look around. These are some of the icons, just some of the icons of business success in San Antonio. They have all agreed to be part of the Blue Chip Jobs Council. They believe in our future. And if you believe in our future and you can help us, we want you on that council too. Y'all can sit. Thank you. The Blue Chip Jobs Council will help open doors that might otherwise have been closed for San Antonio, ensure that our city is on the list for every company expansion or relocation. They'll help us visit corporate prospects open their contact lists, and carry the message to potential investors that now is the time to go long on San Antonio. And supporting the work of the Blue Chip Jobs Council will be our champions on City Council, all of them, including Councilman Clayton Perry, who led a de delegation to Austin, which helped secure 24 new opportunity investment zones. Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez, who cleared the way for economic development on the west side, to help secure $30 million in federal funds for much needed transportation projects. <laughs> Councilman Cruz Shaw, who's overseeing our federal investments on the East Side Promise Zone. And Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran, pushing Brooks forward evermore. 
I know this team will not stop until we are number one in Texas at attracting high quality jobs, and I'm proud to stand with them. I know you will be too. I'll be meeting with key executives of the largest employers in San Antonio immediately to find opportunities to grow and expand and add jobs in San Antonio. And I will do that with small businesses who comprise 90% of our job growth or more, medium businesses, and I will do that with large businesses too. But we know it's not enough just to create great jobs. A top tier economy ensures that everyone has the opportunity to prosper. Our community must provide a quality of life that helps att employers attract and retain great workers. And of course, we know that's a challenge since San Antonio has remained one of the most economically segregated cities in the nation. Cities and regions with higher levels of equality enjoy stronger economic growth and are better able to support that growth over time. That's an outcome we all want. And San Antonio is no exception. We must continue taking other steps to help all San Antonians prosper. One of those steps is building affordable housing. San Antonio is struggling, you know this, with a housing shortage. We lack adequate affordable units today. And what we do have is getting more unaffordable every moment. Over the next 20 years, our region will need half a million more housing units to accommodate the population growth. Just like other cities, a crisis is fast approaching in housing in San Antonio. And as housing costs rise rapidly across the city, we know this is a challenge. Without access to quality, affordable housing, working parents can't achieve the stability they need to keep jobs, give their children the chance to succeed in school, and ensuring, ensure the next generation of leaders and workforce is adequately prepared. In short, our entire community suffers. The Mayor's Housing Policy Task Force has been working on solutions now for the problem for over seven months, and this summer, the task force will unveil a plan to address the issue. We will begin implementing the panel's recommendation by year's end. 30 years ago, on March 31, 1988, outgoing Mayor Henry Cisneros delivered a proposal, a plea, for a comprehensive housing strategy for San Antonio. He wrote then, it is time to act and produce a result that will be recognized as an essential building block of a healthy and prosperous and cohesive city. 30 years later, in 2018, the time has come to make housing a priority in San Antonio. And while we do that, we'll double down on our economic strengths too. Manufacturing, medical, tech, new energy, cyber, San Antonio is clearly on the move in key global economic sectors. For instance, did you know that the density of cyber defense assets in San Antonio is second only to Washington, D.C.? Like medical, the cybersecurity field continues to grow, and that's in large part due to the military's influence on our economic success. You see, San Antonio's prosperity and the nation's defense go hand in hand. Can't have one without the other. So this much is non-negotiable. City Hall will remain a faithful partner to the military and to Joint Base San Antonio. With General Juan Ayala in our Office of Military Affairs, we will protect and we will grow the mission, and we will protect the bases. The military is a vital part of this city's fabric. It is the top employer and generates $49 billion in economic impact annually, nearly half the GDP. So let me take a moment to recognize Brigadier General Heather Pringle, Commander of Joint Base San Antonio and a friend to San Antonio. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll soon be losing General Pringle, who has been assigned to another installation. So General, we look forward to welcoming your successor, General Laura Lenderman. And on behalf of this grateful city, I want you to know and I want to thank you and all of your JBSA, JBSA team for an incredible relationship that emphasizes that San Antonio truly is the only military city USA. We also know our economic development efforts 
will hinge on working actively with our military and university partners to make San Antonio a smart city. And to further cultivate cybersecurity and the technology field, in January, I created the Innovation and Technology Committee in consultation with my colleague, Councilman Manny Pelias, who serves as its chairman. The committee, which includes public officials and private citizens, is addressing the impacts of emerging trends and technologies. The panel will recommend policies that enhance cybersecurity, promote digital inclusion, improve mobility, and expand municipal broadband, the underpinnings of job growth and economic development. To fully realize that vision, however, we must cultivate a workforce that is ready for the complex jobs of the future. Education is central to building the workforce we need to ensure that the job growth we see today will continue tomorrow. And as a community, at every level, we are emphasizing the importance of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math education, because, because it is needed for so many, if not all, of the high-paying jobs in the modern economy. So thank you to the chambers who have made that a priority in your legislative agenda. And stay tuned for an exciting announcement in the coming months about making San Antonio the second STEM ecosystem in Texas. But when it comes to economic development, a fundamental question that every prospect wants to know is, what's the traffic situation? And it is true, San Antonio has fallen way behind. You know the history. No more. The time has come for us to go all in on mobility for the future. That means we must build a multimodal transportation system that includes modern mass transit to maintain economic health. We must give people the choice of getting out of the cars if they want to and get those who choose to stay in their cars to drive to their destinations faster and more reliably. I know my wife likes her new car. We have to take care of the fundamentals too. And I'm calling for a $110 million budget for street maintenance in the upcoming FY 2019 budget. Substantial. And we need to fully fund a top flight street maintenance, ev maintenance effort every year. This is a threefold increase from just five years ago. But still, that won't be enough to keep our city moving into the future. Today, you know the facts. 79% of San Antonians, most of you, commute alone. And with area roads on track to receive half a million more cars by 2040, something has got to give. Traffic engineers, even the real ones, are clear. Business as usual, just building more roads and highways, means that your average commute time will increase by 75%. So here's where we can all agree. Doing nothing is not an option. It's off the table if we want a top-tier economy. That would bring our economy and our quality of life to a grinding halt. We can do better than that. We must do better than that. So today, I'm announcing steps to put our plans into action and make modern transportation a reality for our city. We've been digging into the data of how people move in the city to identify travel patterns. We've used that data to build a comprehensive vision for mobility. Judge Wolf and I have been meeting every single week since I took office on the next steps. And we're transforming our public transit agency, VIA, into a progressive, future-focused, and technology-based organization. So I want to commend VIA Metropolitan Transit leaders, including our chair, Hope Andrade, city staff, as well as SA Tomorrow, the team, on all of their work to get us to this point. And this is the point we're at. We are on the brink of a new era of mobility in San Antonio. Now is the day and now is the hour to act boldly on transportation. To guide the mobility plan from the drawing board to the ballot box, I'm announcing today the creation of Connect SA. This nonprofit will facilitate community input, conduct research, and build support to pave the way for citizens to vote on a modern transportation for our city in 2019. And I'm confident that when they do, they will say yes. We want better, no more status quo. 
Smart investment in transportation translates into economic development, job creation, improved public safety, higher quality of life, and the time has come to act. And if there was any doubt that we aren't serious about transportation reform now, please let me introduce our Connect SA tri-chairs, three San Antonians who have spent their lives moving our city forward. Hope Andrade, Henry Cisneros, and Jane Macon, please stand up. That's right, folks. This is happening. Connect SA directors also include a senator, our state senator, Jose Menendez, and state representative, Ina Minjares, along with my colleagues on the council, Councilman Ray Saldana and Councilwoman Ana Sandoval. Now, I'm sure some will argue that we're not ready for this, that it's too much, too fast, too soon. To those people, I say we cannot afford to wait. Our economy cannot afford to wait. And you know we cannot afford to wait. We're already behind Texas cities like Houston and Dallas when it comes to serious investments in rapid transit, HOV, street improvements, modern transportation. But there is no challenge that we as a city have not been able to surmount together. That's what we do, and that's what we'll do now. Connect SA is not just a nonprofit. It's a promise. San Antonians should be able to connect to their jobs, connect to their neighborhoods, connect to their schools, connect to prosperity. And so to all of you here today, we need your help. The time has come today for San Antonio. We need you to join these leaders in connecting San Antonio with our prosperous future. So they'll be calling you soon, and I'm asking everyone in this room to answer their call. Our agenda at City Hall is always packed. On many days, the big issue is something no one was expecting, but invariably ends up on the front page. So let me be very clear. I will not stand down in my opposition to the misguided charter amendment proposals being advocated by the Firefighters Union. <laughs> Neither should you. If the union leadership wants an agreement, we are ready and they should come to the table today. We will not be bullied into making bad decisions that mortgage our future. We did not inherit San Antonio from our fathers. We are borrowing it from our children. We will maintain our momentum and move toward being a more equitable city with increased opportunities and prosperity for all that maintains the compassionate values that we have. As long as we stay engaged and keep our eyes on the horizon, this is a special moment for San Antonio. We must pursue a path as bold as Martin de Alarcón and those settlers did in 1718, who committed to building a city in the dangerous country known as New Spain. The early San Antonians faced many difficulties, hurricanes, disease, war. Our city founders did not let hardships and obstacles deter them, certainly didn't let politics. They were persistent. They pushed forward again and again. And as we prepare to stake our claim to a bright future for San Antonio, we must maintain that per persistence. Now is the day and now is the hour to boldly move San Antonio forward into an era of equity and prosperity and compassion. We will invest in ourselves and show the world why it should too. Our next 300 years begins with San Antonio becoming one of the most dynamic success stories of the 21st century. So I ask you, join me and my city council colleagues as we embrace big ideas and we make the hard decisions necessary to fulfill that potential. Join me and the business leaders who have stepped up on the Blue Chip Jobs Council and Connect SA as we do the work necessary to make the most of our opportunities. The future won't wait. Let's commit to each other and to those who come after us that we will answer the call. Now is the day and now is the hour. We love this city and we believe in this city and we will make this the city we deserve and the time has come. Nelson, hang on to your hat. Viva San Antonio.